History in Motion is proudly brought to you by Midas Sport and its associate sponsors. Welcome to Kyle Army for the final round of the Midas Historic Tour. Drivers and spectators were out in full force and ready to give their all as they headed for the final checkered flag of the season. Helping us navigate our way around Kyle Army is the Gumtree V8 Ford Capri driven by Mike Schmidt. Here we are about to start a qualifying lap on the Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit. We're just about to cross the line and we're on our way. We're getting down to turn one, which is a very fast right-hand sweep, taken flat. Keep the car to the right-hand side of the road. A little push on the brake with the left foot to turn left. Keep the car towards the curb on the outside. We're coming up to the kink or going back to third gear. Settle the car through here because you've got a very tight left-hander at turn four. Take the curb on the inside, use the curb on the outside. And now we're heading on to the old part of the Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit. And we're on our way down to Sunset Corner. We're in fourth gear. We're braking in fourth gear. Stay on the brake, get the car turned in nice and balanced. We're now back on the power. Accelerating hard at this point, flat in fourth. Very fast, down to clubhouse on the brakes. Late turn in, take the curb on the inside. Third gear, power on. Out towards the curb on the outside. We're now heading to the S's, stay in third gear. Turn in late at the first S, make sure you keep the car to the left. Before turning right, you're now hard on the power, third gear. Heading up the hill, taking fourth gear, we're now on our way to West Bank. West Bank is a blind left-hand turn, we're gonna brake hard here, take a third gear. A late turn in at West Bank. Gotta be very careful feeding the power on here, the track drops away from you. Try and straighten the car so you get hard on the power at this point. Take an early change to fourth, letting the downhill carry the revs as we go to the bowl. We're in fourth gear, flat in fourth gear, keeping the car to the left middle of the road. Braking very hard for this corner. This is a tricky corner. This is the bowl. It's third gear, very slippery. Car gets away from you. Use all the road, curb on the left, curb on the right. Up towards the kink, third gear, a little lift. Turn it in, back on the power hard. Use the curb on the left. We're now heading towards the final corner. And we're coming back to third gear, turning in, back on the power, heading towards the end of a qualifying lap at Carlo. The focus is there, and the competitors are making the final tweaks to their machines before they head out onto the track for the first race in the Marlboro Crane Hire Historic Saloons. With 50 cars on the grid, it promises to be an action-packed event. I bought it from a guy in Cape Town who was racing it there. Um, I don't really know the history of it beyond that, um, but I think in Cape Town their specs are a bit more lax than here, so I've had quite a bit of work to do to get it up to spec. Um, it's going much better, and I need to catch up with it. I'm at the back of the pack because I'm, I'm a rookie and I'm getting into it, but I'm taking it slow because I don't want to do anything stupid. It's an easy way to get into racing. It's, it's not too expensive um, and you get, you get the best of both worlds. You get to have a, an old beautiful car and look after it and get to have fun in it as well. I'm a bit nervous. Um, lucky I'm second in the great position. So if I can catch Frankie, then I will be happy for the last, for the, for the last meeting. The car's fantastic. It's been it's been very really, very really good the whole here. Um, I've actually got pole in the class today. You know, with a thing like this, I'm my, my own biggest enemy. Uh, like I say, I'm as nervous as hell, and I'm finding it really difficult to 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 keep the concentration together. So yes, uh, I, I need to get out there, get put my hair down, and just to do as, as good as I can. Mm. Everyone seems in high spirits as the drivers mingle and chat in the pre-race area before taking to the grid. In pole position, we have Mike Schmidt in the Gumtree Ford Capri. Alongside him is Anton Raths in his Mazda R100 Coupe. The BMWs of Uli Sana and Graham Nathan fill up the second row. Championship leader Yanni van Royen is fifth on the grid in his Sirocco. 
The lights go out and the field accelerate down the start-finish straight and head towards turn one. Mike Schmidt assumes control with Anton Ross leading the BMWs. Graham Nathan has edged his way ahead of Uli Sonner. On board with Sophos Pantazis as he follows Dirk Venter and Sean Schmidt through turn two and up to three. Schmidt get past Venter and heads off to Densham and Pantazis slides down the inside of the Capri as well. Heading around turn four now and Clive Densham has lost his place to the Datsun of Schmidt. The cars make their way down the long back straight towards Sunset. It's great to see such a huge field and a wide variety of cars in this historic saloons class with anything from a huge Merc to a tiny Mini or Anglia. It really does make for great racing and some interesting battles. It looks like Cecil Bishop is having some problems as he gets passed by Johan van der Vault in the red Mercedes and Willem Forster in his escort as they make their way up to Clubhouse. Heading into the S's, and it's Dave Lation in his Sirocco who leads the black escort of Gerd Portis. Marius Ferve is right behind them in his Datsun, ready to pounce should either of them make an error. Up the hill, they push to West Bank. Coming into the bowl, and the Gumtree Ford Capri Piranha is ahead of the actor Far Mazda. Graham Nathan in his silver BMW CSL leads the white BMW 2002 of Uli Sana. Justin Ladner is managing to keep Neil Lobb at bay. Martin Boert is ahead of Sean Smith, who has his hands full with Clive Densham. Round they go, and it looks like they have touched as the Alpha and Datsun head off the track and into the kitty litter. Let's have a look at the replay from Clive Densham's perspective. Into the bowl he goes, and Smith descends from the left, and the two cars touch. Lots of damage as they head into the barrier. Here's Meredith Willis's view of the incident as he narrowly missed Sophos Pantazis. On board with Pantazis, and you'll see Willis has to move across the front to avoid getting involved. On the first lap, I came down the bottom of the mine shaft and I pulled up next to Sean and his little Datsun. And uh, we turned in, and he didn't see me there next to him, and he turned into me. And then I, uh, I hit him on the side, and then he, he turned sideways. And then I hit him again and he pulled me across right into the barrier. So we ended up, both of us, hitting the barrier, which is very unfortunate. A very unfortunate start to the day's racing for the pair. Back on the track and the battles are really beginning to develop. Here we see Jan Jakobs ahead of Daniel Lotter. Coming into turn three and Michael Sullivan has a look down the inside of Quentin Willis. But Willis fights back, but he will have to take the long way around turn four as he loses the position to the BMW. He now also has his mirrors full of Morris for Vase Datsun. Into sunset and Jackie Morrison and Steve Colotti have a huge moment. Colotti narrowly misses the wall before grinding to a halt. Dave Lation and Gerd Boetis are still battling away. Boetis hasn't been able to find a way past the red and white Sirocco yet, but he is still trying hard as they power their way up to turn 13. Round the bend they go, and they begin their descent to the final corner of the track. The Sirocco really seems to have the legs on the Escort Mark 1. Onto the start finish straight and Boetis is pushing hard. He seems to make up some ground in the corners but loses it again on the straights. The crowd on the pit wall are being treated to some great racing in the historic saloons today as Lation eases a bit of a gap over Boetis heading into turn one. At sunset and it looks like Morris Feve has managed to find his way past Jan Jakobs and the red, white and blue Datsun eases his way around to Clubhouse. Daniel Lotter and his striking escort is tucked just behind the pair. Into the S's and Lation and Boetis are locked in this battle. Boetis and his black escort, affectionately referred to as the cage, is determined not to let Dave Lation out of his grasp. Marius Feve is beginning to put a bit of ground between himself and Jakobs as the pair head into the S's. The Alfa Romeo GT Junior has not given up hope of catching the Datsun GX Coupe as they make their way up to West Bank. Marius Feve has been racing for 12 years and has had this car for a year, which he says goes like the clappers, and he certainly is demonstrating that today. Into turn 14, and it looks like Sophos Pantasis is following a ray of sunshine with the three yellow cars leading him through to the final bend. Onto the start finish straight, and Werner Funk in his yellow escort drives past the beautiful Berliner of George Adalis. Pantasis follows him through. 
putting the power down. Pontasius makes it a two-for-one special as he laps the mini of Steven Neofitu and passes Fonk heading into turn one. Werner Fonk will not let Pontasius get away with that so easily and he is right behind him as the pair continue round. Up to turn three and Fonk retakes his position leaving the red and black dancer with something to mull on. On the back straight, and it doesn't take Pontasis long to come back with answer. He pulls up alongside the escort and pushes hard down towards the back straight. Into sunset they go, and Pontasis has the line. Funk is behind him, but he's also coming under pressure now from Wesley Rautenbach, who has managed to sneak up on the pair as they wage their battle. We have a look at the iron on board from Kirsten Fent and her escort as she makes her way past Sean Van Dam going into the bowl. Ahead of her suffers Pantazis, who will be looking to make his way past Fanny Kloppers in his blue Mercedes Benz 280. This is Kirsten's first season racing and she really seems to be enjoying it and getting to grips with the car. Heading down towards turn 14 and Meredith Willis makes his way past in his red Ford Escort. Round the bend and onto the start finish straight. The blue and white Lindenburg Racing Escort of Fenta keeps Kloppers in her sights as that is who her battle for position is with. Jackie Morrison is off and firmly stuck in the tyre barrier. After popping the rear seal coming down the mine shaft, Morrison discovered he had no brakes heading into turn 14 and went straight on. An unfortunate end for him. Mike Schmidt, on the other hand, has had no such problems as he heads towards the chequered flag and takes a relatively comfortable victory in the Gumtree Fort Capri. Anton Rath will follow him over the line to claim second place. Harry Lombard in his VW Beetle is a lap back. Confirmation of the results, Suli Sonner managed to get past Graham Nathan. Yanni van Royen took Class D victory with Justin Ladner clinching Class E. Class F went to Quentin Willis, Monte Snell took Class G and Nikita Nell taking Class H. I qualified a little bit back, had gearbox problems yesterday and some of it today as well. And um, past some of the slower guys, got up to from Sofos, we had a few good laps here and there. Um, during the race I caught up with the guys in my class um, and then the gearbox started giving me some problems again. And then Sofos caught up again past me, we swapped a few times and then uh, at the back straight he, he lost it. So from there, finished and we'll see the next race. It was a great race. It was exchanging places here and there and um, quite a couple of dices down the straight up there. And then the second last lap I was in front and I was overtaking some back markers and there by fact on is it was I just went in too fast. I lost the back end. But luckily the car started first shot. So I think I lost about 20 seconds and I did finish. Morrison passed me in the old Nashua and I ran up the old pit straight and I was, I'm quicker there and I went for the inside but on the outside there was another escort passing him and he closed in the door there and then he, we touched the nose. We spun together and then I had to stop to make sure that I haven't got some major damages and then I'll start it and make sure the car is fine and uh, I'm just going to change some tyres and then we'll be ready for the next heat. Before heat two can even get underway, there are some early retirements. We see Sean Smith being pushed off the track, Kirsten Venter is being rolled out of harm's way and Akita Nell is also going to be a non-starter. For the rest of the field though, the lights go out and the race is on. A wonderful sight as this huge grid makes its way to the first corner. Graham Nathan has made a great start and immediately starts putting the pressure onto Rath. He has a look down the inside of two but isn't quite close enough. Uli Sonne is not going to let that silver BMW break away though and looks down the inside of Nathan coming into three. Van Afonk going round the outside of four as the field jostle for position on the first few corners. Sofos Pontasis takes us on board and down the back straight as he makes his way past the black Datsun of Wesley Rautenbach. Next in his sights is the red escort of Meredith Willis. Up ahead of them we can see Werner Fonk running side by side with Keegan Ward as the pair head up to Clubhouse. Into the asses and the yellow Sirocco of Yanni van Royen is hunting down the BMWs of Sonna and Nathan. The red and yellow Fiat Abarth of Neil Lobb is right behind the championship leader van Royen. 
Into West Bank, the convoy comes, and Van Royen is close, but not quite close enough to make a move. Mike Schmidt has utilized all the power at his disposal to pull out a comfortable gap over the blue rotary machine of Rath. Uli Sana will be feeling the pressure as Yanni van Royen swarms all over his bumper as they come into the bowl. Up the hill to turn 13 and the Sirocco is trying everything in its power to get past the BMW 2002. The two ladies are parked up by the S's and they won't be happy to be spending the race as spectators. Huge lock up there for Uli Sana under braking as Van Royen maintains the relentless pressure. Into the final bend, the green and black Ford Anglia leads Stephen Colotti. The Mercedes Benz Vian Morgan pushing hard as the cars make their way onto the start finish straight. Jackie Morrison's rather bruised looking escort follows Morgan through and runs a bit wide. Great that he managed to repair the car and get it out for the second race. Stephen Colotti pulls off to the right of the track. Obviously, the problems with his car were bigger than he thought, and his race is over. Jackie Morrison is still battling on, and he will be hoping for a finish in this heat after his premature finish in the first race. Morrison's rearview mirror is full of the Mercedes-Benz of Ian Morgan, who is hot on his heels. A blur of red, and it's Dave Lation who is off into the kitty litter at the bottom of the mine shaft with his bonnet up and blocking his view. Now, that must have been a very scary moment for him. Coming down the mine shaft, flat out in fifth, and no vision. A retirement here for Peter Boyson in his Mercedes. Lation is out of the car and unharmed, but that will get your pulse racing. Justin Ladner and Werner Funk are locked in a great battle as they head up to turn 13. Ladner makes a great move across Funk and has a look down the inside of Fenter. Not quite close enough yet. Funk comes back at Ladner and the two are side by side heading towards the final bend. Fonk is right on his bumper and slingshots it down the inside onto the start finish straight. Ladner has the momentum and speed to stay ahead. The trio head towards turn one and Ladner, seemingly unperturbed by Fonk, has a look on the right of Fenter. It looks like Mario Favet's race is over as he pulls into the pits. Harry Lombard and the VW Beetle leads the red and white alpha of Jan Jakobs and they are closely followed by the Mercedes of Colin Keane. Up into West Bank, the trio go. Jakobs has pulled up alongside the Beetle and is looking at taking the long way round. The Beetle sits fastly, hugs the inside line, and Jakobs stays alongside him on the outside. But in the end, he can't keep it up, and the Beetle stays ahead for now. Pantasi is heading into the final bend, and Rautenbach slips past on the inside. Perhaps carrying a bit too much speed, Pantasi spins around. He quickly gets it facing in the right direction again and continues on his way. Into the bowl comes Lombard, and it seems Jakobs is the big loser. After his attempt to pass Lombard at West Bank, he ended up losing a position to Keane. So the Red Mist will definitely be down in that car. Coming round the final bend, and it's the Gumtree Ford Capri Piranha of Mike Schmidt who takes a double victory for the day. Anton Ras comes home in second and takes a double victory in Class E. A great day there for Natal Base Schmidt. Over the finish line comes the great battle between Lombard, Jakobs and Keane, and it looks like Jan Jakobs has recovered to lead them over the line with Harry Lombard second and Colin Keane third. Great racing from the trio. Jenny van Royen took Class D honours, and this gives him the overall championship for Historic Saloons in 2014. Justin Ladner won Class E, Quentin Willis taking double victory in Class F, Matej Snell winning in Class G, and Rion de Roo Class H. Let's hear from Dave Lation. As you know, it's a flat-out fifth gear uh, quarter, and uh, the bonnet popped. So I just saw red and uh, managed to get to the side and uh, getting ready for the three hour, but it's woken me up. I was a little bit lazy before that happened. So. The bonnet and the roofs, uh, you know, a bit of damage, but I'm sure they're fixing it and uh, it'll be ready for four o'clock. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I knew after the first heat that I had to try and stay with these guys because once they get a bit of a gap, they start pulling away. I had a very good start for the second heat and just thought, well, I've got to try and keep these guys at bay. They might have a little bit more speed down the straight. My car handles fairly well and for changes, revving very nicely. A lot of help from Radal Rensport and uh, just want to say thanks to my sponsors, RPS Switchgear and AB Brickworks. I was playing catch up. Uh, I think right at the end, I went past Harry and Colin and yeah, came second. It's after bad, I think you.
how to get past me. It's quicker, that's all. <laughs> I was sleeping. So, yeah, they got away from me and, uh, yeah, I battled to keep up with them. But, uh, yeah, they were quicker on the day. Thanks, Common. Thanks for all the help. Awesome. More awesome action on the Midas Historic Tour after the break.